Hi everyone, my name is Ani Afrina and I will be talking about epoxy resin art. So what is epoxy resin? Epoxy resin is a two-component system which consists of resin, part A, and hardener, part B. By mixing these two together according to its given ratio, this mixture will then harden over the course of a few hours. The ratio and the curing time varies between brand and type, so please read your label to find out what is the ratio as well as the curing time. Epoxy resin, or resin in short, is usually used for furniture making, for example, tabletops and countertops. However, they are also used for art purposes. Some artists pour a very thin layer of resin on top of their paintings and their drawings in order to seal them from uh, dust as well as for moisture. Due to the versatility of epoxy resin, resin can be used to make rulers, bookmarks, coaster, trinket dishes, and so much more. So in this video, I will be covering the basics of resin art, which will include the preparation, the precaution, and what are the tools and materials needed, and I will also be showing you how I make my own resin pieces. So there are a few questions that you have to ask yourself when you are uh, planning your resin project. First is what are you making? As I mentioned before, due to the versatility of epoxy resin, you can make a lot of things as long as you have the mold for it. For epoxy resin, I recommend you to use silicone molds such as these because silicone molds will not stick to cured resin. So it will be very easy for you to just pop them out once they're done. I got all of my molds from Shopee, most of them from Shopee, and it, will, it is very cheap and very easy for you to get. Here are some of the molds that I own. These are ruler molds, bookmark molds, Trinket box and its lid, ashtray mold. These are the molds for a set of coasters and single coaster molds. So all the, the molds come in variety of shape and sizes. Just look it up online, you will find a lot of it in Shopee. So next, what is the type of resin art that you want to do? So generally speaking, there are two kinds of epoxy resin art that you can do. One is embedding and second is abstract. For embedding, you are embedding things inside resin. For example, like this piece that I made a few months ago. I embedded a few, flower, a few rose petals as well as gold leaves. Okay, so a lot of people uh, embed flowers, leaves, and insects inside of resin. But you have to make sure that the flowers, the leaves, and the insects are completely dried. They cannot have even the slightest bit of uh, moisture because we first, we want to avoid it rotting from inside of the resin. And second, if there is moisture or water inside of the materials that you are trying to embed, water prevents resin from curing properly. If you accidentally mix water with epoxy resin, you will get sticky res resin that will never cure. Besides the examples that I've mentioned before, you can embed a lot of things. Just make sure that you do your research to see whether or not the things that you want to embed in resin can be embedded, <laughs> embedded in resin and whether or not it will last over time. Because even though it is encasted in resin, the things can still decay and rot inside the resin as long as moisture is present. The next kind is abstract. In abstract resin art, resin can be mixed with glitters or pigments such as mica or alcohol inks and be used to make patterns. The next question that you have to ask yourself is what are the things that you are going to need? How much resin will you be using? Okay, so for this one, it depends on which uh, mold that you are using. For example, this trinket box mold needs uh, ATML along with the lid itself. So ATML is enough for you to make a trinket box. Next is, do you have the material for it? For example, uh, if you want to do abstract art, do you have the pigments for it? And if you want to embed something, do you have the things that you want to embed? And is the thing that you want to embed already prepared beforehand? For example, the flowers, is the flowers already dried? Next is, do you have the equipments for it? Okay, I will elaborate more on the equipments later on, uh, later on in this video. Okay, the next question that you have to ask yourself is how much time are you going to spend on this? Okay, it is very useful for you to learn the working time for your epoxy resin. For example, 
the epoxy resin that I am using has a working time of 40 minutes. So what does it mean by working time? Working time is the time that you can work with it before it starts to cure. So for my resin, after 40 minutes, it will start to harden slightly. It will turn into gel and later on harden until it becomes a solid piece like this one. Okay, so my tip is if you want to embed, it is better for you to work within this working time because we want to avoid trapping air bubbles in while we are embedding things in there. Unless if that is the look that you're going for, then by all means go for it. But for my own experience, I would prefer it to not have any bubbles and I want them to be clear like this one. Hence, I need to work very fast and to work within the 40, time, uh, 40 minute time that I have. However, if you want to do abstract, it really depends on what kind of look that you're going for. So now I will show you some examples of the pieces that I've made before. Okay, so after you mix your part A and part B, and if you immediately uh, mix in the pigments and you make all the patterns, you might end up with something like this. As you can see, these two are mixed together. In the middle, there is no distinct feature between them. They are in a way, besides the color, you can't really see the pattern. So that is if you pour directly. For, for this one, as you can see, the patterns are a little bit more distinct because after I mixed the part A and part B, and I mixed the pigments in separate cups, I left them aside for 30 minutes before I poured them into the mold. Okay, so the result came, came out like this. You can see that the patterns are a little bit more distinct. You can see the clear parts as well as the pigmented parts instead of just all pigments without clear part. This is hollow, by the way. This part is hollow. Okay, so you can see that the white and the black kind of mixed, but you can still see the pattern between them. You can see that they, they are still kind of separate entities, but they are still kind of mixed in. This one, this piece, I, after I mix the part A and part B and mix in all the colors in separate cups, I left, it for, I left it aside for about an hour and then this is the outcome of the pour. Okay, as you can see, the, the, the patterns are a little bit more distinct compared to this one because this one, the black and the white kind of already mixed together while this one, you can clearly differentiate between the white and the black. Although there is some mixing in between, but it's it's still you can see the details of each of the patterns. For this one, after I mixed the part A and part B as well as the pigments in separate cups, I left them aside for about an hour and a half before I pour it into the mold. As you can see, this one has the most distinctive feature on the resin. So you can clearly see the difference between the white and the black and the, the two colors don't really mix with each other, instead they create their own pattern. But the downside of uh, waiting for about an hour and a half is you don't really have uh, the flowing effect like this one has. This one just moves, flows around very nicely while this one, it just follows how how you pattern it to be. So I just pull it like this. I will show you how to make uh, these patterns later on in this video. All right, so that is, that is some of the tips I would say. It depends on how, how you want it to be. If you want the pieces to have, to kind of, to really mix between the pigments, then you don't have to wait. But if you want them to have somewhat of a distinctive feature from one another, you can wait for half an hour. Or maybe like this for an hour. Or very distinct from one another for a one and a half hour. But it really depends on the working time of a resin. Okay, so I would like to say that if you want to do a resin art, you have to really prepare yourself with the things that you might need and just bring them all out first because you don't because you are racing against time epoxy resin has a very very strict time limit and if you exceed that time limit chances are your resin might be too cured to pour or something like that so we want to avoid those kind of problems and we want to avoid a very hectic situation so preparation is very important just 
have all the things that you need ready uh, uh, at one side so that whenever you need them you can just grab them instead of just at the moment you run and just take them okay so before we proceed to the next part of this video i would like to cite this very famous saying if you fail to plan you plan to fail first and foremost make sure that your work area has good ventilation next is apron because you want to avoid getting resin on your shirt The respirator is one of the most important equipment that you have to wear. This is because we want to avoid inhaling uncured resin fumes. They can affect the nose, throat, and lungs. Repetitive and high amounts of fumes can result in sensitization and asthma in the long run. I use a half Face 6200 with 6001CN cartridge for organic vapor and 5N11CN cotton filter. Change the cartridge after using it for 6 months or once you can smell the fumes through the respirator. Next is gloves. These are chemicals that you're working with. You may get an allergic reaction from it. Even if you don't get an allergic reaction, it is annoying when you get it on your hands. I recommend using nitrile gloves. If it does get on your skin, wipe the resin with baby wipes and then use soap and water to get rid of the residue. It is not recommended to use alcohol to remove it, as it may aggravate a reaction. If you're wearing long sleeves, roll or pull the sleeves up to avoid it hanging down and touching the uncured resin. I usually use silicone cups for my projects, but for the sake of this video, I'll be using these clear plastic cups so it's easier for you to see the resin. I use smaller plastic cups like these to mix pigment. And if I'm mixing a very small amount of resin, I'll be using these medicine cups. Next are mixing sticks. Usually people use popsicle sticks, but I use these drink mixing sticks because they were readily available. Next is weighing scale. For the tutorial, I'll be using these black and white pigments and gold flakes. As well as dried flowers. course epoxy resin. This epoxy resin uses 3 to 1 ratio by weight. A heat gun for popping bubbles. And a tape to clean the mold of dust or specks of dirt. The resin I'm using uses 3 to 1 by weight ratio. Therefore, I am weighing 3 parts of A in one cup and 1 part of B in a separate cup. Next, I mix them up in one cup and mix for about 5 minutes. For smaller volume like this, 4 to 5 minutes of mixing should be enough. But if you're working with bigger volumes, mix them up for a little bit longer. Be sure to mix them up slowly to reduce the amount of air bubbles. I pour them into the other cup and mix for about 4 minutes. I 
I measure our equal amount of resin in two cups so that both coasters would have similar thickness. I'm pouring a clear resin layer to both molds as base. Next, I'm mixing some gold leaf into resin and stir it up to break up the sheet into smaller flakes. and pour about the same amount to both molds. Next, I use my heat gun to pop bubbles. I'm setting it aside for a while to mix in some black and white pigments in two separate cups. After one hour, I pour in the black and the white resin and proceed it to make patterns. Once that is done, I carve them and set them aside to cure for 24 hours. For this part, it's about the same, weighing and mixing 3 parts of A and 1 part of B. I pour a little bit of resin as base and use my heat gun to pop bubbles.
Now the time has come to arrange the flowers in the molds. I'm using a silicone brush to push down the flowers and to make sure that the flowers are completely submerged. I added some gold flakes in the empty spaces of camera. After 24 hours, I added a second layer of resin as flowers tend to rise to the top while the resin is curing. A second layer is added to ensure that the flowers are fully submerged. After that is done, they are covered and set aside to cure for 24 hours. The resin was mixed beforehand off camera. I mixed some red and white pigments in a small volume of resin to get the color pink. After that, I set them aside. Resin is poured into the lid mold. Heat gun is used to pop bubbles. Next, I placed flowers and submerging them in resin.
resin is poured into the box mold. I used the pink I mixed earlier to make the patterns before pouring the rest of the resin. Final adjustments are made before being covered and set aside to cure for 24 hours. Here comes my favorite part, demolding the cured pieces. Enjoy!
So we've reached the end of this video. First and foremost, I would like to thank Kusaka Sarawa for giving me this opportunity to be featured in their YouTube channel. And thank you for watching until the end. If you want to see more of the things that I've made, I have an Instagram page that you can check out. Uh, some of the pieces are for sale if you want to check them out. So you can scan this code right here. Alright, so that is all for today. Thank you very much once again and goodbye!